Good day, I'm Tom Costello in for Halley, and we are coming on the air with tensions near a fever pitch right now in the Middle East. And the shocking development, this man that you're looking at right here is Ibrahim Akil, wanted for the deadly bombings of the U.S. Embassy and the Marine barracks in Beirut that killed more than 300 people. He was one of the Hezbollah commanders killed in that strike that Israel just carried out in Beirut. Okay, there's the aftermath of those truck bombings back in 1983 near Beirut. The State Department just last year put out a $7 million reward for information on Akio. And it's not just that man who is now dead. Israel says it, is, it has eliminated all 20 members of Hezbollah's command. That raises tensions and it raises questions about when, how, if Hezbollah might respond. Can it respond? We've seen multiple attacks over recent days. Israel accused of being behind the exploding cell phones and walkie-talkies in Lebanon. Then today, strike with the Iran-backed Hezbollah in the crosshairs. So this evening, the entire region is even more on edge than a week ago. Let's bring in NBC's Keir Simmons, who was on the ground for us in Beirut. Keir, talk to us about the significance of this moment tonight with the man wanted for the deadly bombings on the Marine barracks and the embassy 40 years ago, now dead. Yeah, something to see in this city, Tom. Uh, Ibrahim Akil, accused of those 1983 bombings here in Beirut, now killed by an Israeli jet over uh, Beirut. It, it is a, a moment in a story that has had so many moments uh, this week. And when you look at the pictures of the building that was bombed, uh, the devastation, uh, frankly, uh, now 14 uh, dead. We expect the number to rise. Bodies are being pulled from, from the rubble. Just think about uh, that Lebanon has been on the brink of all-out war for months. And those pictures are just the result of one single Israeli bombing. And we saw overnight uh, artillery and airstrikes by Israel uh, on uh, Lebanon, Hezbollah positions, and then Hezbollah returning fire with Katusha rockets uh, into Israel. Israel's point, and they're making it today again, is that there are tens of thousands of Israelis who can't get to their homes along the border. There are Lebanese, too, who can't get to, to their homes. And Israel says they are determined to get those people back. Now, what they appear to be doing, and it goes to the question of, of that pager, uh, of his pager and walkie-talkie attacks, they appear to be trying to put pressure on Hezbollah to concede, to allow that to happen. If Hezbollah doesn't concede, concede the question is what then? Yeah. Uh, Kier, you know, it, it would appear that Hezbollah has been so degraded between the walkie-talkie attacks, the pager attacks. Now, this attack today that took out the top command of the organization, is it in a position to launch any sort of a significant response to Israel? It does have substantial firepower. I mean, that's the point, honestly. It also, of course, does have the backing of uh, Iran. Definitely what happened this week would have disrupted Hezbollah's operations. I mean, that's just clear, isn't it? Uh, but that may be tactical rather than uh, strategic. Uh, so, I mean, well, part of your, your question, Tom, goes to what does Iran really want? Uh, now, Iran has been signaling with a new president it would like to negotiate, but, of course, on its own terms. So who's winning in Iran? Is it the, 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 the faction there that, that you know, are, are fully supportive, frankly, of a fight with Israel and, and ultimately with the U.S.? Or is it the faction that seems to want some kind of diplomacy? I mean, that's one of the questions. I think also, too, what happens in this region does depend on, on Israel. I mean, we are, we are on, a, on the brink. Uh, whether or not the different sides will step over that brink. Uh, it, it, you just cannot predict that right now, and, and it has many people here very, very anxious. Okay, Kier, we're going to keep coming back to you, I'm sure, over the coming days. Uh, thank you very much for your reporting. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.